Well, welcome to um, session three of four for Empower Witness, and I appreciate you being here. And um, I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer, and then we're going to turn it over to Sam, because Sam um, has to go back to the worship center to be a part of worship practice. And so, uh, but he's got something he wants to share with us, and then I'll come back up, and then we'll turn it back over to Tom or Heather, whoever's going to. Sam, Sam, Sam and Heather. Sam and Heather. So Heather. There we go. All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today, and I thank you for the opportunity we have to gather together um, as as a church. And we thank you for our church, and thank you for, God, what you're doing in us and through us, God. And we just continue to pray for our future. God, we know that you hold that in your hands, and so we, we surrender to you. We thank you for loving us. I thank you for the men and women in this room. And God, I thank you for the opportunity that you give us to be a part of your plan uh, to reach uh, reach this world for you. And God, I pray that we'd be faithful in that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here's Sam. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it. Um, I, if I haven't met you before, I'm Sam White. Uh, and I want to talk with us this evening about something called getting past the silence. And what that kind of boils down to is if you're talking to somebody that you love, family members, or people you work with, or people that you do life with, and uh, you're trying to shift the conversation from basic stuff to a gospel conversation. And you've thrown a hint out there. And for whatever reason, intentional or unintentional, they're not taking that hint. Something like, what did you do last night? Well, I was at my small group Bible study. And it just goes silent. The air leaves the room. And we know how difficult that can be. So how do you get out of that spot? That's what I want to talk about. Getting past the silence in that part. So you've got a hand out in front of your little half page homemade that I did. Uh, and I wanted to uh, get some additional questions. So I looked at the internet and I've got my two favorites, but I wanted to give you guys some additional questions uh, that might help you jumpstart or resuscitate a conversation. Now, when I went to the internet and did a search, I did a search on, uh, I used the phrase questions to start a spiritual conversation. And I got 1,850,000 <laughs> Whoa. So the point is, you have to study and take a look at who those people are. Are the questions biblically, biblically, biblically based? It's easy for me to say. Are the organizations biblically based? So you want to watch that. Then I said, I'm going, to, I'm going to share a couple of my favorites. But if you take a look at your hand up, my favorites are this, the 15-second testimony. Last week, I believe you went over the 15-second testimony, right? Mm -hmm. It ends with a question that says, yes. do you have a story like that? And that just is a natural segue to keep talking. The second thing that I like to use is the question we found out during the pandemic when we were talking to folks in the harvest. What gives you hope? And if, you're ever, if you ever use that, that just allows a person to talk, and then you can turn around and say right back to them, let me share with you what gives me hope. Now, on your handout, we're going to talk about the people that we, that we love, You'll see there's a source on there, and the source being proclaimed, they're from the Vancouver Catholics. So not only are Catholics sharing the gospel with their family, Canadian Catholics are sharing the gospel <laughs> with their family, okay? And we know that sharing the gospel with our family members may be the hardest audience because they know us on our good days, but they also know us on our bad days, right? So there's some questions there, seven questions to help you get, get you started and guide you into a deeper conversation. For time's sake, I'm not going to go through the seven questions, but all of those questions, except for number six, and you may want to put a star by number six, because if you're dealing with an agnostic or an atheist or someone who just says, I don't believe in God, that might be a question to utilize. But the other, the other six questions are basically someone that has some sort of religious background or church attender. But if you get the opportunity to share the gospel, Share it because the church attender does not mean that they're always a believer. Okay. Now, people that you work with. I found an internet site from Sean McDowell. Sean McDowell is an associate professor of apologetics at Biola, Biola College in California. And he had what are best questions for spiritual conversations? And he talked about the fact that most of us have fears. We just don't want to get into an argument. That's not what we want to do. We want to talk to him. And he gave us four questions. But he emphasized over and over, ask and listen. And then most people in turn will say to you, 
well, what do you believe? Because most people are willing to have a spiritual conversation if you will treat them the way you want to be treated. Have you ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. Okay. So once again, for time's sake, I'm not going to read through these four questions, but I do want to point you to number two and talk a little bit about that. Number two is why do you believe what you believe? Why, in my training throughout my career, you just ought to get rid of the word why from your vocabulary and yeah. use the phrase, tell me your reasons, okay? Because mm -hmm. you say why, it becomes a defensive posture. Mm -hmm. Tell me your reasons and it'll keep the conversation going. The third question I want to take a look at, who's in spirit, influenced you spiritually? That could be a person or a book experiences. But again, if you run into an atheist or agnostic, look at that question or the comment below. Tell me about your understanding of the Christian God or the God you don't believe in and keep that conversation going. All right? Now, the last section is on discussions with people you do life with, the soccer team, you know, things like that. Uh, the source of that was Love Worth Finding, which is a ministry from Dr. Adrian Rogers in Memphis. He's passed away, of course, years ago, but his church is still, his foundation is still uh, carrying this on. Spiritual conversation starter. And I wanted to point you to question number one. The question on there is, do you ever think about spiritual things? One of the things we talked about in the harvest is, do you consider yourself a spiritual person? Now, if you ask that question, you better be prepared for whatever comes out next, because it may not be biblically based. It might be about the rocks and things like that. But listen, ask questions, and again, that will give you the opportunity. Can I share with you what I believe? I want to point to the third question on there, too. If you were to die today, would you go to heaven or hell? Kind of ties with the evangelism explosion, E, -E question. Uh, if you were to stand before God today, why would I let you into my kingdom? Kind of ties with that. But this gives you the opportunity to talk about heaven or hell. And as, as we as a church are still more than lost of our senior pastor, it's still very much fresh in our hearts. That's the way it is with folks, too. So when someone close to us passes away, ultimately, we do think about our own mortality and our own eventual death. So it's an opportunity to talk to that person. However, bear in mind, the best place to have that conversation is not going to be at the funeral. Okay? So keep be sensitive to your timing. You'll be able to show them a way that they can know that they can go to heaven. The fifth question on that list of seven is uh, the one I really like because it just kind of sets everything up and just kind of puts it on T for you and you're ready to go. Has there ever been a moment in your that's been life-changing for you? Most people will have a life-changing moment and then, boy, what comes next? Well, let me tell you what changed my life and you can share the story with Jesus with them. Keep in mind, your testimony is your testimony. They don't have to believe it. They don't have to agree with it, but it's your story and you need to tell it. Okay, so I've given you about 20 questions, including my two favorites. So what questions do you have for me? Anything. All right. Well, I want to wrap us up with two things. <laughs> There's a version there that spoke, spoke to me uh, through all these years, and it's 1 Peter 3.15. But first, in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Okay? Always have spoken to me on so many things. And I like to quote a good theologian, somebody we all know and love. Chad used to use this all the time. Don't be a jerk. Okay? So if you're talking to people to get past the silence, you're trying to move from a, a point of just regular conversation and stuff to a spiritual discussion so that you can use one of these gospel tools. Find one of those questions, find one, two, or three of those questions and tuck them in your gray matter so that you have them for future use, that you can pull on them. If you know you're going to go talk to somebody that's an atheist, you know you've got a couple of questions right there that you start that you can use. But remember, the point is you're trying to get that conversation to a position where you can share the gospel, use one of the gospel sharing tools, and share the gospel using Jesus Christ. All right? Questions? All right, that's it. Uh, before I do what I was going to do, um, does anybody have a, a story from maybe the last couple of weeks you've had an opportunity to share or you've made an attempt? You know, and it could be 
it could be, you know, it could be a success story. Or could, well, let me say it. That, that's, that's wrong because anytime you share, it's a success story because that's our job. So anybody with, with a story you'd like to tell? Yes. Um, I called my sister who, um, I'm not really sure. After the conversation we had, I'm not sure where she is in her faith. Um, but it was just, I don't really ever talk to her on a weekly basis or anything. Um, just because we're pretty much opposite, like in any kind of subject, we're on the opposite ends. And so, but I talked to her and I was just like, I was doing a lot of listening because that's what we've been thinking about, like listening to what they're going through and everything. And so just a lot of listening, what she's going through. And so right now I'm working on having an actual relationship with her and just kind of like seeing how we can just, um, how maybe I can like pour into her mm -hmm. throughout multiple conversations. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, and she, she made the comment that she keeps her religion secret so I'm just not sure what what that is about, but um, she lives a very lifestyle of you know, um, like having partners and she does witchcraft and just a lot of bad things. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'm just kind of I've shared the gospel with her twice prior, um, within the last I think maybe two or three years. I've kind of done the 15 second testimony and just kind of letting her know like. Also, just like in depth, my testimony, but um, yeah, I don't really know that's where she's at. Thank you for sharing that. That's good. All right, actually, it's scary. Well, I noticed. Have, when did you have that conversation? Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday okay. at 5 30. Okay. She was when she was driving home from work. I yeah. talked her year <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking because we talked after church Sunday and she told me, and so pray for her sister. And I've just been praying for you all week. And I didn't know if you were going to come because I've been anxious to ask you how it went. And so, but good. Thank you for, for being scary. faithful. Yeah, very scary. Exactly. Scary. Actually, and, and and you did it. So that's that's so huge. Do you mind sharing your name so we can pray for her? Uh, Jessica. To Jessica. I would appreciate the prayers. Yeah. Good. Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's not this week, but all through the time that, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, talking to other people. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I found that's really, really hard is that they don't have a concept of sin. Mm. Well, I mean, most of them are Buddhist, mm -hmm. so they know there's bad and good, right? And also, they don't even. I would say, you know, the bad is the sin, and they can't really get in you know, a hold of that in you know, a word itself. Mm -hmm. So then I did my research. They say that if you get a witness to those kind of people, it's more of like a relationship thing, right? You know, because you cannot really like force something in that they weren't grew up and really. Heard those words, right? So not unless they come here and they start, you know, hearing those things and they start asking questions. Yeah. But so like, you know, you're gonna talk to them and you know, yeah. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. That's good. And I'll, I'll go go ahead. Sorry. I think she made a, a cool point. Um, we're he categorizes the people you love, the people you work with, the people you do love. All of these are people that we have a relationship mm -hmm. with. And I think you, you you nailed it. A lot of times, I, I, this is me personally. I didn't give your name. Amy. 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 You said, "Look, I'm 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 patient," and I realized this is this isn't a one and done. Mm -hmm. This is a yeah. conversation I'm going to have over and over. Mm -hmm. And you know that's that's important for you know to right. uh, keep that relationship there to understand where to yeah. to ask maybe a, a question that would be probing versus to just mm -hmm. listen. I think that was wise. Yeah. Yeah, and Jimmy, I, I just had a couple of things happen over the last you know couple of weeks in the workplace. So we had a colleague that kind of passed away, you know, suddenly, and I had a manager that reported to me, and she was close to her, and 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 there was some abuse and other things that took place. But you know, she had shared with me, well, you know, she's in a better place, and so I said, well, what does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. You know, of course, she shared, you know, mm -hmm. that you know, eternity in heaven with Jesus. That's great, you know, and then, but I'm always sensitive because I'm in a position of influence from a leadership standpoint and I I want individuals to meet me on the terms as a Christian not you know I don't want them listening to me because I'm their boss right. so right. that's just something I've tried to lean into a, a lot more because you know in the workplace it's like I don't do the happy you know, yeah. thing I say Merry Christmas and I, right. you know, yeah. and we've had a lot of things with um, you know now there's all these diversification groups, you know, and, and so, you know, the, the 
the LGBT and and uh, and I had made a comment to an HR manager one time when when they changed it to you know to be a and an ally mm -hmm. and I made the comment I said yeah I'm an ally mm -hmm. they're a sinner just like me mm -hmm. and she said but we can't say that mm -hmm. so, yeah. so so I just I, I think it's just getting more comfortable to, to be able to do that yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. but they, just like what Sam was saying you know sometimes you just have to latch on to what somebody's saying mm -hmm. and and just meet them where they're at right there and that that may open up a more expansive conversation right there or it may be the stepping stone like what Amy mm -hmm. from another conversation and you have to you have to do it in a way that you're not always in their face with it too because right. that was one of the things I was asked Sam you know because he talks about the silence but sometimes people it's not a silence they're like I don't want to hear it right you know That's and they true. turn away and and so you just with love, you have to do it. That's good. Anyone else? So just update on mine, because mm -hmm. I've shared in church. Um, so the last couple of times um, that I've been in there, I've, I've been asking, uh, I've been asking, what can I pray for, uh, for you today? And it's been, it's been mostly generic, you know, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of using that as a, as just sort of a little kind of ease myself in there. Um, and, um, and the times that I've asked for that, because I've, there has, there's been sort of a crowd, so I haven't had a lot of time with her. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. And like I said, my, my goal is I've got to do it. That sounds bad, but I gotta do it by the, before the end of February. I gotta share it because that's what we're doing this month. But even if it doesn't happen, <laughs> I'll keep going. But, yeah. uh, that's my one, uh, that, that I've been praying for and, um, sharing with. So, Hey, one other thing we do, I'm, I'm going to, I think it's, um, kind of cool, um, the momentum, you know, if you, if you do it a couple of times, you, you get your confidence up and your momentum gets you, yeah. you're doing it. And anytime you go to a restaurant, if you'll just, before we get the food, the waitress or waiter is, Hey, we're going to pray for food. Can we pray for you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the simplest thing, mm -hmm. but what you will hear after that will change your world mm -hmm. because you will hear brokenness and you'll hear mm -hmm. it's, it's an intersection we've heard it countless times yeah, in our family. Absolutely. Absolutely. So anyway, that's just a accountability update. Anything else? Okay. Here's my question for you today. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you need a bigger one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need more time. You need more time. Let, let's let's hear it. Let's hear it. Like let, what's what's wrong with you? Okay, let me let me let me go to number one. The one is, and this probably covers them all, so I'll give you two. Selfish, and then also uh, people pleaser. That's what's wrong with, that's a couple of things that are wrong with me, not all. What's wrong with you? I stay in my own environment. Okay. And it's a Christian environment. Okay. I need to be out. Christian bubble. Yeah. Everybody's saying What's wrong with you? I'm very judgmental. Mm. Okay, I don't know how to spell that. They're easier. No, There is an E. Yeah, there's not an E. Yep. Uh -huh. Okay, you keep it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, judgmental. Good. What's wrong with you? Can't spell. Can't spell. Yeah, <laughs> K A N T. I can't spell. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Need for perfection. Mm. Perfectionist. Impatient. Impatient. Critical. Critical. Wait for your son there when you said impatience to say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> preach, Dad. Preach. <laughs> or, uh, too busy. Busy. Remember that's 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 sin. It's, it's all sin. sin. I that's think that's what you said. Yeah. <laughs> Busyness. Okay, that's good. I, I, so, what's wrong with you? And then let me read this to you. John fifteen, verse sixteen. Ready for this? Wish I could find it. Here it is. Okay, this is Jesus talking. You know how I know that because it's in red. <laughs> this is Jesus talking. You didn't chose me. You didn't choose me. 
I chose you. I chose you. I chose you. And here's the other thing. And I knew you were critical. Mm -hmm. I know you're selfish. I know you're a people pleaser. I know you're judgmental. I know you're too busy. I know you're impatient. I know you're distracted. I know you're a perfectionist. I know you get stuck in your Christian bubble. I knew that. I knew that. But I chose you. I chose you. And I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. And so I, I, I use I, I just I just wanted to remind us because today uh, today especially I just I, I was at my aunt's funeral in Abilene earlier today and for some reason the, the grace of God was just something that just came into my head and I couldn't get rid of it not that I need to get rid of it but you know what I'm saying that's what I was thinking about and I was like man how gracious is the fact that God knows all of this and knows more, right? I put two things. Like Heather said, I could fill up this board with everything that's wrong with me. Not you, me. Me, I don't think you. Okay, well, I'll get this side. You can get the other side. Um, but yeah, but but God is gracious and to use us and, and and to call us and to empower us to do what He's what to do His will to 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 you know to reach other people who are critical, who are selfish, who are people pleasers, who you know all of these things. We, that's that's what we've been called to do. And so, you know, I I, I want to give God a thousand excuses. And I, yeah, I think he looks at me and he goes, I know, <laughs> I still want you to, because I chose you. And I think we can say, God knows what he's doing. And so um, you've been chosen. And, and the other thing I would say, just before we turn over to, is Heather to be coming up? But before we turn over to Heather is knowing this, okay? knowing this about ourselves, what this should do is drive us to our knees every day. And just to say, God, your work doesn't get done without you. And so I don't want to move. I don't want to take a step. I don't want to do anything without first coming to you and say, God, your will be done in me. And I think when we pray for his will to be done in us, guess what happens? His will gets done. And so I, I just, this is just, this hit me, um, and I've been thinking about this, and, and I wanted to share that with you. So, but I don't want to leave this up there because that's all negative, but um, I'm going I'm to take it down. Heather, come on up here. Okay. How many of you have seen the three circles? Sure. Okay. So I gave you guys stickers, and we'll talk about why I gave you that in a minute. It is, uh, I love all the tools that we're learning because I feel like the more of these that you learn, the more natural it becomes to kind of make it your own and share based on the situation. And And I love these questions from Sam too. We needed this one. We're like, what are the openers? There's a ton of great ones in here. So the three circles is... Probably out of all the ones we're learning, I don't want to call it the simplest, but it's super elementary. Um, we teach it to kids in BBS, and they can do it. Like, it's the simplest tool out there. You don't have to memorize scripture. You should memorize scripture, but you don't have to to be able to share this particular gospel tool. And maybe that's why it resonates so much with me. It's like gospel for dummies, and I need that sometimes. <laughs> so. Um, so I think in the interest of making sure everybody has the same foundation, I'm going to go through it one time so everybody can hear it. And then we're going to practice kind of drawing it. And then if we have time, you guys can kind of practice with each other. And it's one of those things just like asking for prayer or, you know, it is scary. And you make me feel so much better because you're scared too. <laughs> so it's scary to have to share your faith with people sometimes, especially when they're out of our bubble, right? It's easy in the bubble, but it's the workplace or whatever where it starts to make you a little uncomfortable. All right. So this is the three circles because we use three circles. <laughs> And you start, you can draw this on any little piece of paper. You can talk through it. I like to draw it, though, because I feel like it 
um, takes the pressure off of people having to look you in the eye while you're talking about it, <laughs> especially if it's somebody that doesn't know Christ, you know, you feel uncomfortable. So sometimes giving them a diversion can feel better. Um, so we start with three circles and we say this circle represents the world. And I'm going to draw a line through it because the world is broken and we don't have to look real far to see that. You turn on the news for a minute, maybe 30 seconds, you can see how broken the world is. And when God designed the world, that's not how he meant for it to be. <coughs> this circle here represents God's perfect design. And I think everybody does this maybe slightly different. This is this is my version. And I can't spell either Jimmy. I went to school in Mississippi. So don't bear with me. <laughs> um, so when God created the world, that's not how he made it. There was no sickness, there was no death, there was no shame. Um, and so the way we got from this over here is through something that you were talking about. And that's sin. And sin is really just doing my own thing instead of what God wants me to do. It's the selfish, I know best kind of mentality. And the bad news is that when we're over here like this, we can't get back over here because of sin. And so this is the part that really resonates with me and my children. Why I love this with kids is because, um, a little side note, our oldest, I'll never forget when we learned this, and then something bad happened, and I, who knows, I can't keep up now, but there was some event, and he was like, well, Mom, the world's broken. And I was like, oh, it helps them think about why the world is the way it is. So when we're trapped over here, we have this human um, desire to want to fix things. And so we try all these different ways to try to fix it. Uh, sometimes we try like, you know, I just need a new job. If I had a better job, everything would be fine. Sometimes we try um, maybe more education. I just need more education and then things will be fine. Uh, sometimes people think they need a new spouse. <laughs> um, huh? <laughs> not, that doesn't just, mean anything. Just, just write it down. Um, Only when you're impatient. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And then sometimes, you know, things can take a darker turn with drugs, alcohol. Um, in our society today, there's, you know, Netflix. People just want to binge watch stuff. <laughs> so there's all these things that people try to do to make themselves feel better. And not all of them are bad. Some people will, I'm going to feed the hungry a good thing but none of these things will take care of your sin problem and while some are kind of good and some maybe are less healthy what they all have in common is that they're temporary they may only make things better for a minute um, and they ultimately just snap you back and we draw this line like that because it's like a rubber band like a bungee and it just drives you back in further and further into brokenness because it doesn't solve your problem. You still have this problem over here. And um, God knew that and he didn't want to leave us there. So in his grace and his love, his mercy, he made a way out of brokenness. And that's where the third circle comes in. The way out of brokenness is through his son, Jesus. And that is the only way to get 
restored back into relationship with him. Okay. So a lot of people know about Jesus, but that alone doesn't take away your sin, right? So there's some action that has to happen. So we have to believe. And a lot of people believe. You can tell this story to people and they're like, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, but they haven't done uh, surrendered or um, people like different words there, repented, um, whatever words you want to put there. But ultimately it's making him the, I like to say the boss. <laughs> He's in charge. I'm not in charge. Um, so once we do that, That is what takes away our sin and ultimately brings us back in the whole relationship with him. I'll here in a minute. And probably my favorite part of this story when I'm sharing it with somebody is to talk about the restoration that happens. And we just talked about it in church with 2 Corinthians 5. The old is gone and the new has come. We're a completely new, restored person in Jesus. And we're made whole. Um, but that doesn't mean everything's perfect, does it? <laughs> For those of us that are already believers, it doesn't mean everything's perfect because we still rub up against, we still live here. So there's still, you know, some pain. But we do know how to handle it a little bit better, hopefully. And we ultimately know where we're going to spend our eternity with him in heaven. But that's really not the end of the story either. So he didn't just restore us to, um, I mean, he did restore us to himself, but there was a purpose in that too, right? We're supposed to go and tell other people. He made us an ambassador, which means we have a message to share. And we are the only, we're plan A. <laughs> so we're the ones that have to go into the broken world to share our message. And so at the end, it's a little bit like the Roman road, you ask. You know, there's really only two places people can be. They're kind of trapped here in brokenness, or they're living a restored life. And which one are you in? And that's kind of how it goes. Um, any questions about that? Any thoughts? There were just a couple in here, I think, that hadn't heard it before. No? All right. Well, I think we have paper in front of us, maybe. We have a piece of paper. So if y'all are drawing it, that's good. I think we should spend a minute um, kind of breaking down maybe each piece so that you can get comfortable sharing some of the components. And you can feel free to throw in some of the other stuff you've learned. Because we've learned verses that go with every single one of these, right? Um, I'm going to erase these parts. And Amy, you actually, you've gone and shared this before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I shared it with my niece. Did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a long time ago, I was just like, oh, I'm learning this at church. Can I practice with you? And she is not a believer either, so she didn't want to hear it, or she didn't know what I was going to practice. And so I did, and she was kind of just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you still shared it. You still shared it. That's her. That's your part, right? That's our part is just to share. So that's the best ruse ever. Just say I want to practice. <laughs> I learned this thing at church and I want to practice it with you. All right. So we'll do the um we start with three circles. And then this, this circle on the right represents brokenness. So we're going to draw a line through it. All right. You don't have to look real far. I don't think anybody argues that these days. Okay. 
what we can do. Well, yeah, I know. I'm like, I was going to break it down by circle, but I can't really do that. So then we go over here. <laughs> and that is not, God did not design the world broken. He Would you ever start with that circle? Some people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people start that way. <clears throat> so it really just depends. Mm -hmm. um, I think when we've gone to apartments, Sometimes this one, people are like, oh, yeah, the world's crazy, you know. Oh, well, I believe in God. They say, well, I believe in God. And then you're like, okay, this is, well, how did, what did God, how did he create the world? And they're like, oh, we're perfect. Adam mm -hmm. and Eve, that was what's down. Yeah, that's what. So it really just depends, like, who your audience is. You can do it however you want to. I tell you, you know, when this, when this first, so Chad first heard about this, and he kind of, over Ross to kind of investigate more, but that again, we've learned this is our third tool. Mm -hmm. we will, I think we have one more next week, but but again, the reason why there's nothing magical about this no. tool, but like what what Heather said, it's just it's just sort of easy, and it's easy to do um, because you know you can repeat it and you can teach kids how to do it. You know, it's hard to teach a kid the Roman road. I'm saying you shouldn't, um, or it's hard to teach yeah. you know, it's hard to teach you. I mean, kids, well, you know, if kids see it enough, right, they're going to be able to do what Chad did. Oh, this is visual too. With it. Yeah. And it's visual, you know, all, visual. all of the things that, that make tools, great tools. I mean, that's, you, you have all of that. And so that was, that was one of the reasons why we just, you know, this is so easy. So we just wanted everyone to be able to learn because you know, as a church, we want to make sure that you have at least one tool, yes. at least one that you would that you'd be that you could use, and hopefully they'd be willing to use. But like we say every time, right? The best tool is the tool that you're going to use. And so, um, but yeah, but I I said it. I think I said it day one. Sometimes my tools they kind of it all becomes a hybrid because I start bringing in a whole bunch of okay. different. I did too. That's the good thing, yeah. right? That's yeah. I would agree. I've learned things. Well, well, the simplicitous tool. But I've been in conversations where. You get a theologian, and they want to go to the Bible, and and then you can, I mean, there's scripture, and there's tons of scripture tied to this. Mm -hmm. You know, the wages of sin are death. With that, you know, and, and, you know, you get into Romans, you get into Corinthians over here on your restoration, you get into uh, to John and his love for you and and believing, and all of those things. You can it can really dig into because you know it looks like a very simple tool, but you'll get someone that's. Knows that has a lot of Bible knowledge, but you can tell they've never done the the surrender piece, you know, and that's. And I think it's uh, it's it's just easy. Yeah, it's for dummies. So, <laughs> all right. So he made the world perfect. So this is um, where I think the important part, really, where you can tend to um, pull people in is on our nature and how we we have this hole and we want to try to fix it. That's our human nature is something's wrong. Maybe I don't even know what it is, but I'm going to try to fix it. Um, and then you can come up with all your own little squiggly lines. When we're doing it with kids, we'll talk about good grades or making the sports team or, you know, just whoever your audience is. You can probably figure out what it is they're trying to trying to do to get themselves out of brokenness. What are some other ones that y'all think of? Religion. Yeah, religion. Do you want to talk about the difference between our belief and every other religion? I have to do something. Mm -hmm. That's something that they always relate to. Yeah. There's always something they need to do to get to the place. We talked about yeah. that some of some of the other tools too. Mm -hmm. What are other ones that y'all have maybe you see or well witchcraft? Yeah. Or yeah. I mean anything but um like Jesus. When I've shared with if I know it's a parent, sometimes I will use our kids. Like mm -hmm. we try to find our worth and value in our, in our kids. That's a good one. Giving them the best. Yeah. Working so hard so they can have the best. Right, right. Cowboys. 
<laughs> Jimmy, I don't understand what she's thinking. <laughs> yeah, they're over there. I'm going to raise your back. There you go. Uh, this way. <laughs> All right. So try all these different things. Politics. Ooh, that's a good one right now. Isn't it? <laughs> Heather, I know sometimes when I started there, I mean, it's not that you're trying to be teleassertive, but you start with the person. Would you agree with me that, you know, we live in a broken world? And you, you might throw out a couple and then get them to, mm -hmm. and so you start that engagement you know, pretty quick. I love that. <laughs> that's what makes that circle, I think, so yeah. easy. Mm -hmm. Um, any other thoughts on that one? <laughs> what if okay. someone says, I don't think the world's broken? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think it's just a on the TV, right? <laughs> I, have, watch the news. Yeah, I had that conversation uh, a few months ago. Uh, not here. I was in Peru with a mission trip. And the person said, oh, it's not broken. I said, well, do you, and, you know, the language thing, I said, yeah. well, imperfecto. Uh, we live in an imperfect world. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it is the, the language the can bother language. It sounds strong. Yeah. There are people out there like that. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing I'll talk about, if there is some, I'm like, you know, there's, Cancer, there's sickness, there's broken homes and broken families. Heads being cut off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's you can go straight there if you want. To. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you can talk to that way too. Do that. And you can put the other way when they say that, you will tell me what a perfect world is in your mind. Yeah. Oh, that's good too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. That's really good. Because then that'll start, and then again, you just mm. latch on. I think that really is the secret of all these is questioning, mm -hmm. right? Making sure you don't get so worried about what you're going to say and, and listen exactly. and listen yeah. and then ask questions mm -hmm. on all we the have tools. to listen when we ask a question. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like the point that you made, you know, where you say some of these are really positive things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not bad. Yeah. They're not yeah. all bad. <clears throat> um, they don't take care of your sin. No, mm -hmm. no, and you said it. They're all temporal. You know, you know all those things will can and will eventually be taken away, mm -hmm. uh, except for your knowledge. So. Yes, exactly. All right. So then we go from that to missed a step for y'all. Sorry, we got over here from here. Because of sin, we chose to do our own thing. We try to fix it on our own. But that doesn't fix our sin because these are temporary. They won't, won't take care of that problem. But God loved us so much. Here's John 3.16. Mm -hmm. He loved us so much he didn't want to leave us over here trapped in brokenness. So he made the one and only way for us to get out of it. And that way is to be Jesus. And Jesus was God's son. He died on the cross. Mm -hmm. His blood I'm going to the heads, getting cut off. Sorry, you distracted me with that one. I'm sorry. That's the thing. No, I'm sorry. That's uh, the only thing <laughs> that can cover our sin and take it away. But Jesus, we can't just believe he is who he said he is, right? We believe he's God's son. We believe he died on the cross. We believe he rose again, defeating death. And that's all good, but there's an extra step in there. And that's surrender. And when we do that, 
we're making him the boss and not ourselves. When we're the boss, this is what happens. This is what happens when he's the boss. We get restored back into right relationship where we were supposed to be to begin with. And that's 2 Corinthians 5. The old is gone, the new has come. He's made us ambassadors. We've been entrusted with a message. We're not just here to be in his perfect design, but we're messengers. He gave us a message. And that's what this is. Get out of the bubble, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and that gives us the assurance that we know where our eternity will be spent. Doesn't mean things are perfect. That's the other thing I like to stress with people, especially when they're new believers, because they, you know, um, especially with other cultures and stuff, there's prosperity gospel and all this, and they think, oh, it's magical. It's all going to, that doesn't mean that. <laughs> That's not what it is, because we still rub up against everything in the world that we live in. We're not quite here yet. So he didn't just do that for us to, you know, have rainbows and unicorns. He wants us to go and tell others this message he's given us and go try to get them out of brokenness. Go on from there. But then so but I've I've walked through this not as not as talking about a plan of salvation, but like what God has created our marriages to be, but our marriages become broken because of selfishness, because of our own agendas, because of all those things. And I said, the only way for our marriages to be what God wanted them to be is we have to, we have to surrender our marriage to Christ. Okay. And so you, you, you talk about, and you know, and you can create this. And so it's, it's a, it's got a lot of applications. Um, but I think that that's one of the ways that, that I've, I've learned to use it. And then again, if if one or both of the couple couple are not Christians, mm, then you the can problem. just transition. You just transition to you know what this is also this is also the gospel about sharing Christ. And so then you go okay, you want your marriage to be what it wants to be. Well, you got to be first what you know what God wants you to be. So anyway, that that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Well, it's my turn to talk. Yeah. He's telling me it's time. Well, so you, real quick, last, last thing I want to say, these, these um, <laughs> stickers that I gave you, the best way to use this, you can put it on the back of your phone, put it on your water jug, um, and you would be amazed how many people, you just set it down, you know, on purpose, a certain way where they see it, they're like, how is that? We've had people in my family ask us that before. Um, so there's your, it's an easy M, then it's a lay in it. So. Okay. <laughs> right in front of them. Oops. Oh, what's that? <laughs> oh, that's all good. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> great job. All right. One of the neat things, you know, let's give her a One of the really great things about this tool, she said it, is that you can, you can make it yours. And every time I hear somebody else do it, it's, you know, it's a neat thing to hear. So, yeah. right. I want to share one experience. I didn't want to do it earlier because I didn't know how much time we had. But looking for opportunities that come your way, they do come your way. Mm -hmm. And you just have to have your eyes open. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example this last week. Well, this week. Uh, no, it was last week. It was like Tuesday or Wednesday of last week. I went to the auto parts store. And there's a guy, a, a colored fellow, black fellow, who had a shirt on, and it says, God is dope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I knew what that meant. But what it did, it gave me an opportunity to ask him about his shirt. And so he... He said, well, he, and he went to, I was a white guy, so he explained to me what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you ask. And I, That's right. That's right. And I went immediately and said, let me tell you how awesome God is. Hmm. 
and I went right immediately into the three circles. There was nobody there. Uh, I looked around a couple of times, nobody there. By the time I was nearly done, there were some two or three people. So I about got all the way through. And so you can do it. So I would challenge you to look, just, just let the Lord show you those opportunities. They're there. They are there. So, and you know, I don't have a, I don't have any family uh, that's that I can share with. I, I shared with my brother a few months ago. He was the last one on my family list. So, right. so let's pray, and we will go. So, Lord, thank you for the the message that you've given us. That uh, you've redeemed us. You've made us one with with you, and so we thank you for the life that we have. And Lord, it's a privilege to be able to share that. And it's awesome. It's it's uh, it's uh, nerve wracking. It's all kinds of things in our hearts, but we know that you, we believe when we know you want us to do it. And so we just ask you to help us. And we thank you for each one here. And we pray that uh, we take that message out and, and to share that with others this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. Well, I want you to know.